Good morning, William and I town. I think the rain's kind of dampening everybody's spirits, or you sound like you're still half asleep. Let's try that again. Good morning, William and I town. Good morning. All right. Welcome to God's house in the back mountains of Northeast Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Laura, and I'm glad to see those who dodged the raindrops to come this morning, and it's good to have those online joining us. Just remember, if you are joining us through Zoom, you can always enter a prayer request or an announcement in the chat feature, or unmute yourself at the time, and we'll get you included. Does anybody have any announcements to start us off? I do. Go ahead, Gene. Um, the geraniums are going to be delivered May 10th for those of you who did order them. But they come sometime between 9.30 and 5 o'clock, and so I can't <laughs> give you the time. But what I'm hoping to do after they call me that they're coming is I'll let Amy know, and maybe she can put out an email, and then those of you can come and get it. But I will be here to get them at whatever time it is. I'll put them all out downstairs. I'll put names on so that you know which ones are yours for sure. So you'd be able to pick them up like anytime, I think, later that afternoon. Okay. May the 10th is when the geraniums that were ordered for the shelter. The Victims Resource. Thank you. The Victims Resource Center will be available on May the 10th. And we'll let you know when when the time comes. Others? Kim? Um, adult Sunday School, our last um, Sunday School will be on Mother's Day, May 14th. And then we break for the summer. Okay. And I will be staying after church today if anybody um, would, has any questions or anything they want to discuss about the new SAS leadership structure. Um, I'll be here if anybody wants to talk about it. Okay. And following up, and the SAS, for those who might still be confused, is the new name for the old ad board. And we will be meeting on Tuesday evening at 6.30 as well. Oh, sorry, it says 7. 6.30. 6.30, yeah. okay. Others? Yes. For anybody that wants to get past these, there's still 18 of them down there. Uh, Get them, otherwise they're going in the freezer. If you didn't get any pasties or you ran out or you're just hungry for them, downstairs we still have 18 first come, first serve. Others. For the next two weeks, um, if there are any prayer requests, prayer chain messages, please contact me. Kendra will be unavailable to take um, prayer requests during that time period. I'd also like to mention that coming up on Mother's Day, we're going to have the step-by-step -step praise band here leading worship and sharing their musical gifts with us. Any others that we might be for today or overlooking? Then let's prepare our hearts for worship. Thank you.
invite you to rise in body or spirit and join me in the call to worship, which is in the back of the hymnals, number 754. And we're going to use the musical response number two for this. I shall not want. The Lord Lord makes me lie down in green pastures. Leads me beside still waters, restores my life. Leads me in the right paths for the sake of the Lord's name. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live in the faith we sing.
things a little bit out of order this morning, but we're still doing them. I'd like uh, to know, are there any moments where you've encountered God, or do you have any joys or concerns you'd like to share this morning? Continued prayers for your friend with the speech problem? Yes, they now have to think that she had a stroke due to a closed head injury from that accident. Okay. Others? Darwin. I was a little early last week in asking for my son Corey's prayer, prayer for my son Corey's foot operation. It's actually tomorrow. So. <laughs> Corey's surgery is tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Others? Yes, Jan. I'm very happy that my daughter is safe home from Alaska. She was for her job. Jan's daughter is home from Alaska safely. Okay, I do have a list. Um, one of the joys we had besides the pulpit exchange last week, and I heard that uh, from Pastor Carrie, how much she enjoyed being here at Lehman I Town, and what a warm welcome she received. We've had, uh, for the last two weeks, Brian and I have been watching a white robin in our neighbor's yard flitting around, and that's not something we had seen before. It was a joy to have Linda play at the Meadows this week so that the residents for the chapel service did not have to suffer through my voice trying to lead them in prayer and song. It was a very nice service. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Please keep travelers in prayer. There's a lot of them out on the road. Um, churches and pastors who are moving or in transition we'd ask that you keep some of our extended relatives in prayer one sister-in-law tina is recovering from covid and has been diagnosed with thyroid cancer so please keep her and her husband eric lifted up another sister-in-law michelle had surgery this week she's recovering from that and one of her job well her job is she's a home health care aide that goes and takes care of mostly very sick children in their homes and while she was off she lost one of her clients so please keep the preble family lifted up in prayer and our brother-in-law, Elmer, who is recovering from pneumonia. Any others? Laura. Uh, Diane's not with us today. Um, she took out with Sunday school, and I know that she's been missing us, and we're missing her. She's up under the weather. So we go pray for Miss Diane. Um, for Miss Diane? Yeah, for Diane Sickler. We go pray for her. She's up okay. And Jane couldn't be with us today because of pain in her back and legs, so keep her in prayers. Indeed. She okay. is here. <laughs> we are glad to have Jane on Zoom, though. <laughs> we'll definitely continue to pray. Others? Yes, Jenny. Well, uh, keep Jimmy Lee in her prayers. Judy is she continuing to recover from surgery? Let's unite our hearts in prayer. Holy and gracious God, this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are glad, Lord, that you have given us another day and another opportunity to praise you, to study your word, to come together, Lord, as the united family of Christ. And God, even though it's a wet and dreary day, we give you thanks for the rain. The rain that fills our wells, that restores our yards, that provides for us, for creation. Lord God, this day, we are so grateful to be in your presence and to be able to share with you these moments 
of joys and concerns, these things that weigh on our hearts. And Lord, we speak quite a few out loud, but there's more that we keep hidden in our innermost heart that we share only with you. Hear us now as we pray to you, speaking heart to heart in silence. hear our prayers where there is sickness grant healing in body mind and spirit where there is grief we ask for your healing comfort and Lord for those who struggle we ask for your strength and your peace Lord this day we come united of heart and mind and voice as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. <coughs> thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory forever. forever. Amen. I invite you to give your attention to the choir as they share with us their gift of music. Well, since you're all warmed up in the faith we sing, get your faith we sing back out. And 2176 is actually what the anthem is yeah. going to be. <laughs> Between being away and poor Jane not being able to be with us, we are having a duet plus me, and now we're going to extend it to you. I don't think we've ever sung this before, but it's a good one. It's very easy, trust me. So sing lustily, and we'll sing it twice. Do you want to stand or sit? Stand up. Seven oh. six. 2176, make me a servant. <laughs> Are we good? Okay. Make me a servant, I'm all in me.
Well, good morning, Annie and Patrick. How are you today? Are you getting excited for the end of the school year? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> are you counting the days yet? Yes. No. Yes, no. <laughs> okay. Well, at school, you have a teacher that teaches you, and when you hear your teacher's voice, you do what the teacher says, right? And if your teacher were to come in here today and you not see them, a little scared of that idea. <laughs> Somebody's eyes got real huge. Then, and you were to hear their voice, you would know who they were, wouldn't you? Well, I've asked a few people in the congregation to read a Bible verse. And you're gonna keep looking at me and I want you, after they read it, to try to guess who it is. Okay? All right. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Do you know that voice? It's somebody you don't interact with a lot. You don't have them. That was Miss Shirley. Okay, there's somebody else. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Miss Audrey. Miss Audrey, very good. <laughs> this way, not that way. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Miss Kim. Kim, all right, you did very good. You know these voices because there are people here at church, right? Now, we're the Bible verses today, some of them, are from John 10, and it's talking about how we can know the voice of Jesus. And Jesus is talking to his friends, the disciples, and he says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls out his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, the shepherd goes ahead, and the sheep follow him because the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Now, who do you think the shepherd is in the Bible? Jesus. Jesus, that's right. And we would follow Jesus because we know his voice, right? And Jesus knows each one of us by name. He knows Patrick, and he knows Annie. He knows your mom and dad and your cousins and everybody here by name. And so when Jesus calls our name, we will follow him, right? Because we know. And we know his voice. We know the shepherd. What I'd like you to do now is I'm going to have a prayer. Only instead of repeating what I say, at the end of the sentence, I want you to say, we are listening. Will you practice that? We are listening. We are listening. All right, let's pray then. Dear God, speak to us this day. We are listening. <laughs> and God, speak to us through Jesus. We are listening. Hear our prayers, O Lord. We thank you and praise you and know that you love us, O Lord. We are listening. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> I have here a bookmark that reminds us of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And thanks for coming up this morning. because it's out of order. <laughs> All right, I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we join in singing To God Be the Glory.
First reading for today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Thank you, Laura. The reason I asked to do the gospel lesson today is we're kind of picking up in the middle of a story when we pick up with John 10. And I'd like to review what happened in John 9 to kind of set the stage. You see, there had been a man who was born blind, and he was a beggar, and Jesus came along and saw him sitting there and healed him gave him back his sight, and went on his way. Well, the blind man was so thrilled, and he was going around telling everybody what a miracle had happened. Word got to the priests in the temple in Jerusalem, and they called the man in and said, wait a minute, how is it that you were healed on the Sabbath day? That's what really irked them, was that somebody did work on the Sabbath day. And the blind, formerly blind guy said, look, this man Jesus did it. He gave me back my sight. Well, where is he now? How am I supposed to know? I just know he gave me back my sight. Well, the Pharisees and the temple leaders pretty much grilled the formerly blind man about this miracle. They called his parents in and said, is this your son? Did he, was he born blind? How did he get his sight back? Well, the parents were a little bit afraid of the temple leaders and the Pharisees. And they said, well, yeah, this is our son. Yes, he was blind at birth, but I don't know how he got his sight back. And they ask him. He's old enough to answer for himself. And the parents pretty much washed their hands of their son and scurried away because they didn't want to be put out of the temple, which is what would have happened to them. 
So the Pharisees and the temple leaders called the formerly blind guy back in front of them and started to question him again about this Jesus because they're thinking, what kind of a person does this sort of thing on the Sabbath? He must be a sinner. It must not be right. The blind man, formerly blind man, says, look, I know I was born blind. I know that now I see because of this man. Do you ask me about him because you want to be a follower of his too? Well, that really pushed the Pharisees over the top, and they kicked the formerly blind man out of the temple. And when Jesus heard about it, because, of course, the crowd, you know how word spreads. When Jesus found out about it, he went and looked up this man. And he started to talk to him and said, Listen, do you want to follow the Son of Man? Do you believe in him? Formerly blind man said, tell me who he is so I can believe. And Jesus reveals himself in that moment as the son of man. And the formerly blind man falls down and worships Jesus, giving thanks. And then Jesus goes into a little bit of a riddle where he talks about spiritual blindness and by now the Pharisees have followed along and they're overhearing this conversation and thinking Jesus is speaking near blasphemy and their anger is really hot. And then when he, Jesus starts talking about spiritual blindness, they said to themselves, well, that can't be us, can it? We, we can see. And so that's when Jesus goes into this next part chapter 10 beginning at verse 1 the pharisees are part of his listening audience and jesus says very truly i tell you anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate but climbs in by another way is a thief and abandoned the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. This is a word of God that is still speaking. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing the Gloria Patrick.
open our minds so that they're not clouded or foggy, but fill them with your Holy Spirit and grant us understanding of this riddle that you spoke. Grant us, Lord, a deeper comprehension and realization of your message and teachings. And Lord God, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit that we might have a deep-seated sense of joy at knowing the message of the cross, the good news of Jesus. And may we share that message with anyone who crosses our path this day. In the name of our risen Savior, amen. amen. This figure of speech, this metaphor that Jesus used talking about sheep and shepherds and gates was confounding to the Pharisees. It was a riddle wrapped in an enigma that they did not understand. And so, Jesus had to try to explain it. Now, if the Pharisees, who lived at the time of Jesus and was familiar with those aspects of life, didn't get it, what, how can we modern folk get it? So I'm going to invite you to take a step back in time as we explore this a little bit to what life was like back then. Fishing and farming were some of the biggest occupations, and so was sheep herding. What do we know in this present day about sheep and shepherds when we don't really encounter them? But in the life of a shepherd who's tending sheep, the sheep live their lives playing follow the leader. A sheep would not go anywhere on its own, usually. It took somebody else in the lead, which is why we would hear of the shepherd walking ahead at the beginning of the flock. Now, the work of a shepherd, if it was a family flock, usually fell to the youngest boy. There were men, the hired hands, who took on shepherding, sheep herding, as their primary occupation, but it was not a highly respected one because the men who were shepherds were usually viewed as dirty, uncouth, welcome, or rough, and unwelcome in polite society. They carried a rod that we heard about in Psalm 23, but this rod was different from the staff. The rod looked something like a billy club of today that had a knob on the end, and on that knob there were usually nails or spikes sticking out of it to make it a better weapon to fend off attacking animals or bandits and thieves. And it was also used, the rod was, for counting sheep when they would come into the pen or go out and it could be used for dyeing the sheep. They count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, dye the tenth one. The tenth, that was the tithe. According to the law, we give a tithe of our offering to God's work. And so that tenth sheep would be dyed as the offering. Ironically, Although shepherds were not well respected, it's their rod that served as a model for a king's scepter because it symbolized protection, power, authority. Now the staff that we also hear about in the 23rd Psalm was five or six feet long. It may have had a crook, it may not have, and it was used to pull a sheep back from safety to safety. A shepherd might carry along a sling and a flute. If you were going to get to a sheep in time to protect it well from an, an attacker, you had your sling that you could use to scare off the attacking animal or the bandit. Remember, that's what David used when he stood against Goliath and the power of the Lord. 
a, a flute. The shepherd could play that to calm the sheep, to try to get them to follow him, to get their attention, and just to pass the time as well. In the 23rd Psalm, we read about still waters. There was usually a path beside still waters that sheep and people could follow along, and sheep did not like fast-moving waters. It frightened them, and they would not drink. It was not unusual to allow flocks of sheep to mix together, particularly at drinking wells. And you'd wonder, because we would see all of these sheep, Linda's flock was coming, and Jimmy's flock is coming, and there comes Chris with his, and all of these sheep are gathering together, and how are we going to tell them apart? That's easy. The sheep know the voice of their shepherd, and they will follow their shepherd when the shepherd starts calling them by name. They will not follow the voice of strangers. Now, sometimes you have to move around seeking greener pastures, seeking more food for your flock of sheep. And when it was time to move, the shepherd would stand out and call all of the sheep, gathering them all around him. And once he had them, one, two, three, off he'd go. And the sheep would just fall in the line, following along behind their shepherd. There might be a sheep dog or a hired hand at the back of the flock to try to keep strays together, to try to alert if there was danger coming. And when you were out and about, of course you need to find shelter. And so you'd look for a cave that would be big enough to hold the sheep. And you might build a stone wall outside of it to give a little bit of an enclosure, like a small run or play yard. Now the problem is, when you do that, and you might have a gate in the middle of that for somebody to stand as the gatekeeper, is this is how wild animals or bandits and thieves might come over the top of the wall to get the sheep. And if a thief or a bandit got in, what would happen is they would slit the neck of the sheep and then throw the carcass over the wall to their cronies on the outside. And so shepherds began to put thorny bushes up on top of the wall to discourage that. Think of walls and fences that have barbed wire across the top to keep out people who shouldn't be there, or in our cases today, to keep people in sometimes. The shepherd would count the sheep as they entered through the gate and would name each one. To us, the sheep might all look the same, except, well, that one might have a black face or a crooked leg or something, but the good shepherd could tell each one apart. And their names usually reflected their differences, like spot or gray ears, or maybe be something that happened to them, a personality trait. That one might be called thorny because they like to get caught in thorn bushes. Or somebody else might be called wanderer because they would wander off. But the shepherd knew each and every one of their flock by name. And each of the 3,000 plus people who heard Peter's message on the day of Pentecost and began that early church that Laura wrote, read to us about this morning, each of those people, Jesus knows by name. I want you to take a moment and think about the people you went to school with, whether it's somebody, the people you graduated with, or people in elementary school, way back. If you were to run into them today, would you be able to name them? Jesus could. Jesus knows the names of everybody that is here today. 
Jesus knows the name of everybody that's in your place of work, in your school, everybody that has lived from Pentecost down, everybody that came before, everybody that comes after us. Jesus knows by name. Such were the times of Jesus, who walked among all people, taking on the role of shepherd and fisherman, custodian. He cleansed the temple, we're told in Matthew 21. Carpenter, priest, teacher. He was a protector, a provider, loaves and fish, anyone? Bread of life, leader, sacrifice. We don't necessarily hear of shepherds like that today, but Jesus could easily come as a lineman, a truck driver, a pipeline worker, someone working in one of the many warehouses around here, somebody waxing floors or gathering up dirty linens at the hospital or the nursing home, somebody who serves food to teens and tweens during school, Somebody working on paving the roads, running a register, fixing stoplights. Jesus could come as anyone. And just as they did in the days of, that Jesus walked this earth as a human being, thieves and bandits still run wild. They still try to take what isn't theirs to take. You might not find them on the FBI's most wanted list, but you will recognize their names. Anxiety, stress, fear, cruelty, violence. They seek to steal your peace of mind and steal your sleep. Bandits use aliases like temptation, no confidence, arrogance, racism, anti-Semitism, Greed, they steal your self-worth, your sense of identity, to drown, attempting to drown out the voice of the good shepherd who stands watch at the gate, keeping them at bay. Like thieves and bandits of old, the villains of today stand outside the church trying to lure the followers of Jesus away with whispers of empty promises of wealth and relaxation for working so much. But in working so much, you don't have time for church or church functions, for doing the works of God. The villains of today scream threats of public shaming on social media platforms like TikTok and WhatsApp, Instagram and Facebook, a social ostracizing if parents don't allow their children to participate in Sunday sports or activities, but followers of Jesus listen only to the voice of the shepherd who stands as the gatekeeper, who calls each and every one by name. As shepherds of yore called their flocks by name, so Jesus calls us by name to join his flock. When we fall off of a cliff, when we lose our way, Jesus comes to find us, to draw us back and tend our hurts and mend our wounds. Jesus stands, not just as the gatekeeper, but as the gate itself. He keeps our going out and our coming in, as Psalm 121 reminds us. And when we come into the sheepfold, we can know that we will find a place of abundant life, a place of refuge and protection, that with Jesus as our gatekeeper, we are safe, we are provided for, so much so that our cups will overflow as we dwell in the house of the Lord, the kingdom of God, forever. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord God, call us by name and welcome us into your sheephold. Welcome us as a member of your flock. 
Guide and lead us, Lord, for we are listening and we are willing to follow where you lead. Lord, continue to protect us with your rod and your staff that give us so much comfort. Lead us in your paths of righteousness for your name's sake. And let us dwell in your house forever. This we pray in the name of the risen Savior. Amen. Amen. In sacrificing himself upon the cross, Jesus gave us everything. Let us now return to God as we are called. Would the ushers please come forward? in your sight and Lord God multiply them sending them out into this world to share the love and the compassion and the good news of Jesus Christ we pray this in his name amen, amen. our closing hymn is Savior like a shepherd lead us
that you are loved by the Savior who knows your name. Take that warm feeling in your heart and share it with others. Let them know that God knows their name and follow that calling. Go in the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.